Welcome to another episode of the Orange Nerd Show, where we talk about everything except the theme parks. Today, we are talking about trailers, and a lot of them dropped recently at this con over in Brazil. We're going to discuss them up next on OG55 on the Orange Nerd Show. Welcome aboard to another episode of the Orange Nerd Show, where we talk about streaming, film, TV, nerd culture, all of it. Taking a little break from the parks to talk about other stuff, more studio-driven content. Before we do that, though, I want to bring on, I want to introduce my fantastic, my friend, my brother, my colleague, my producer, Mr. Bash Sky, the DA, Dr. Dre. Welcome back, brother. Hey, uh, I am glad to be back. Uh, glad to be back. Glad to be here talking about some of this stuff. This is a whirlwind of stuff that broke out yesterday, man. We were all thinking, right. oh, yeah, it's probably going to be slow under the weekend. And sure enough, well, uh, Comic-Con Experience was taking place in Brazil, and they everybody just decided to drop every single trailer possible. So uh, I think this is going to be a really fun show, so thanks for having me on. If you want to guys, if, if you guys want to see um, follow me at home, you can go ahead and do so right down there at Vashkai, just like it's spelled right there. Type that in, and I should pop up for all the robust discussion, as Christine Waysense McCarthy would say. And if you want to go ahead and see me, well, uh, it's going to be on the channel you're watching right now, where you can find shows like the one you're watching, Orange Nerd, or Such as Corner, with our friend, uh, Disney Family Man 23, or um, me <laughs> at yeah. uh, Freshly Squeezed, your source for juicy news and info squeezed fresh right from the Grove. And uh, there's been a lot of this going on, so um, I think it's appropriate. I am altering the deal. Pray I don't alter it any further. That's a little. That's a little Bob Iger walking in the door, yeah. right? And he's altering the deal. Pray you don't alter it anymore. Uh, it's gonna be fascinating uh, what happens there. But uh, speaking of movie references, we have a lot of uh, a, a couple movies to get to anyway. Yeah. Uh, but the first, I think we should start off with. Oh, gee, the big one, Indiana Jones Five. There we go. Indy 5 in the Dial of Destiny. So the, the long-awaited trailer dropped yesterday. Right. Okay, this is this is a big movie. This is a big movie. Um, it's a return of, of this character with Harrison Ford. Uh, there's been some time now since the last movie, <laughs> uh, Crystal Skull, which wasn't that well-received. Well uh, this is the first Indiana Jones movie uh, under the Disney leadership, mm -hmm. so to speak. Going to be fascinating. You saw the trailer, Vash. What are your overall thoughts and opinions on what you saw? I thought, now, uh, judging by the reaction that people uh, seem to have given it uh, at D23 Expo, uh, because apparently this is that same trailer that they, that they uh, uh, unveiled for audiences there, did not release it, but that they showed it there. Um, judging by that reaction, I thought it was going to be, you know, uh, uh, my, all my fears would just... Melt you know, kind of can melt away as soon as I saw this trailer because it was it had a phenomenal reaction. I mean, people were really high about it, and yeah. uh, you saw Harrison Ford get choked up over it. It was like, okay, this is this should be good. And then I saw it, and I was like, mm, oh, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know about this one. Um, look, listen, huge Indiana Jones fan, like I love me some Indiana Jones. I mean, you know. Not only was it my favorite attraction growing up, <laughs> right? It, it, but but it, it was my favorite attraction largely because it was you know dedicated towards an IP that I just I absolutely loved. I absolutely wanted to you know emulate Harrison Ford uh, as much as possible growing up. I, I think you I think you I think I've told you this OG yeah huge uh, Indiana Jones fan. So look the like you said the fourth one uh, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull not so good right yeah. had some flaws. <laughs> Right. Yeah. And um, I was hoping that this one would kind of overcome them. But, you know, there are some um, places in this trailer where it kind of treads that same ground. And I was relaying, to the, relaying this to you earlier, but uh, some of it's like, oh, hey, you know, uh, you know, the, the old days, they're gone. Uh, we're, 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 we're too old for this. And, and, and right. we, you know, we got to We got to just face facts, face reality. But uh, John Reese Davis, which which is great to see uh, him in the role as Sala gets back in there. It's like, oh, well, wait a minute. Maybe the days aren't 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 so dead. Right. And that kind of starts off our adventure. Hmm. 
you know, I would have preferred to have Indy just kind of be Indy. Why does he have to come? Uh-huh. Why does he have to come back the way he does? Right? He's a professor. Maybe he's had an arche- archaeological dig, you know, and 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 maybe he discovers something. I mean, you know, you you have. Uh, these kind of professor um, uh, um, roles where they send them out to to a place, do some research. Maybe, you know, maybe it's sort of something like that. I don't know. It just seemed a little. Uh, but uh, but then I don't know. OK, two things real fast and I'll, I'll, I'll pivot over to you, to you, OG. Um, one, the uh, what do you think about the arrangement of the music there? I thought it was a little bit um, weird where they took that. I think the beginning, when the beginning, uh, the beginning of the trailer was very, um, the arrangement was very uh, slow. Like they, I think they were playing the theme theme song, but it was very, very slow. Dun, yeah. Dun, 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 yeah. Right. Right. It was very slow. Uh, once it picked up and you could actually hear the Indiana Jones theme, I was like, oh, okay, this is cool, you know. But yeah, the beginning of it had that kind of slow rollout. Yeah, I don't know if I'm 100% on board with that. Now, I, out of everything in this movie, the music I'm not too concerned of, this is John Williams. I mean, he scored this. Well, yeah, it, it's Sean Williams, but it's like his last hurrah, you know? And, yeah. And I'm usually not like, oh, they, they didn't, it didn't sound good in the trailer, but they, I don't know. It just sounded a little bit weird, a little bit too epic, you know. I, I don't know. It just, it just sounded off to me. I don't know what it was. Very, very strange. But, but like you said, I, I, I have full faith in John Williams. Yeah, I am. No, he's the, he's the man. But as his last hurrah, man, I want him to get this one right. And I don't know. That, that had me a little concerned. Yeah, yeah. In terms of like, okay, overall, my my overall thoughts of the trailer, I actually really dug it. Um, okay, cool. I actually really dug it, but I, that but that doesn't mean I had no concerns though. Like yeah. I, by no means did I feel this was a perfect trailer. Mm-hmm. By no means do I feel like oh well, I have no concerns. Absolutely have concerns. Trailer wasn't perfect, but overall, I thought it was a really really fun trailer. Our friend uh, Jay Jay from Story Geeks actually kind of put it. He encapsulated even like my feelings in one tweet. Surprisingly, I, I, I'm kind of on the same page as Jay on this. Uh, why I'm excited. James Mangold has a great track record, particularly with tone. He's right about that. James, James Mangold does have a great track record. I love what he did with, uh, with Logan, uh, mm. which again, the tone on that one was freaking amazing. Uh, Jay is absolutely right on that. Um, mm. Ford versus Ferrari, another great film. Um, so if he can bring some of that energy from those two films into yeah. indie, oh, I, I'm, I'm very optimistic. This will be a good movie. Uh, yeah. I do, I do like his work. Typically, I do like what he does. Uh, he also says here Harrison Ford was clearly excited and emotional about, about it, and that's true. At D23, Harrison was like getting choked up, and he really does believe in this project, which right. is fantastic. You know, I mean that that does bode well. Harrison is, you know, he uh, he's kind of a grumpy old man, and he. he you can kind of tell when he's not feeling something and it mm-hmm. seems like he's kind of into this one. So that's, that bodes well. But Jay goes on to say, what makes me nervous? Love Feely Waller bridge as a performer, but don't need politics. This is my biggest concern. Mm-hmm. This is my biggest concern. Yeah. I don't really know Phoebe. I gotta be honest with you. The only, the only thing that I really know her from is solo her droid in that movie. I, I did not like that droid. Um, I like the idea of the droid, a droid fighting for droid rights. I think that was an interesting concept, but the way it was beaten over your head with it, it Man. was repetitive and monotonous and annoying and, and screechy and whiny. I did not like her character at all. So I have right. to admit, based on Solo, that doesn't that makes me nervous with her because that's my only point of reference for her. Yeah. Okay, but I'm willing to have an open mind with her because I will also say this. I am not a big uh, Lin-Manuel fan. It's mm-hmm. not. I know a lot of people love his music. I don't love his music. I really, sure. really don't. When I heard he was doing the Mary Poppins sequel, ugh, I was like, great. Well, I watched Mary Poppins and the music was absolutely great in that movie, Mary Poppins Returns. So mm-hmm. sometimes people that you don't necessarily like in previous work, they come in and they do a great job on something unexpectedly. I don't have enough information on her. She seemed good in the trailer. The chemistry between her and Ford seemed really great. We'll see. 
But if the politics and the messaging are kind of pounded over your head in the movie, that's going to turn me off a little bit. I want things to feel a little bit more organic. Yeah. Um, and then he also goes on to say here, the crystal skull wasn't great. Yeah. That goes without saying, I mean, fans mm. really, really don't like that movie. Um, now I will say a couple of things that I'm, that I'm excited for that I'm optimistic about that kind of go, kind of go beyond what Jay is saying here is that, uh, Steven Spielberg was the director, but he passed the reins over to James Mangold, mm -hmm. right? So he was going to be the director, but he, he kind of passed the reins. So I know he's only like a producer on this, yes. but the fact that he was going to direct it at some point lends me to believe, and I could be wrong in this assumption, lends me to believe there's, he has more input and, and, and involvement in this and say someone that comes in as a producer and that's it. I think that that bodes well for this film. And George Lucas is also a producer. Now, George Lucas is, wasn't going to direct it or anything. So he's going into this like the typical producer would, very minimal involvement. But Spielberg was the director. He passed it over. I think his involvement might be a little more than a typical producer. Yeah, I, um, I'm I'm hopeful that Steven Spielberg and uh, I, I'm hearing even like George Lucas might be involved here, right? Um, at some level, um, uh, I'm I'm hoping that their influence kind of reverberates off this film and actually makes it, uh, uh, uh you know, a, a better film as a result. A couple things on this. Um, uh, this seems to be a project that has a lot of shifts working it you know and that can be a scary thing there you know because sure. everybody kind of has their idea of where it should go what should be all that kind of stuff we know that kathleen kennedy has meddled before in some things right right we know even phoebe waller bridge has meddled uh, uh you know in, in somewhat i i remember uh hearing that she contributed i believe to the script uh or at least to her character in um l3d7 and and solo uh, so, uh, and, and, you know, it's like, Hmm, we, we've done this dance before <laughs> with these two players in here. Now, obviously there are, uh, there's a little more oversight here, but, um, it is, uh, it is, it is a little concerning there. Um, I wanted to go ahead and look up, uh, real quickly the, um, sorry if, uh, if that came over the, the mic there, as I was looking this up, I wanted to look at who wrote it, um, and see if I have recognized any names. I don't, <laughs> sorry. Um, uh, but, uh, but that, but. Uh, that that will um, that will tell you a lot as well. James Mangold, I guess, uh, also contributed to the writing. So you know, hey, that's a little bit more input as well. We right. know that he does uh, really good work with, um, like you said, Ford versus Ferrari. Uh, Logan, obviously, uh, everybody right. points to. Uh, I'm just hoping that he can bring it kind of you know, uh, again to a character as beloved. Uh, likely far more so than than Wolverine uh to to uh a Harrison Ford played Indiana Jones um also too you know things I do like about the trailer what you're seeing on screen right here is oh, yeah. some de-aging and whoa this looks really really good yeah unbelievable this looks incredible this is absolutely incredible and, and, and the title of the movie sort of um, implies di Dial of Destiny, right? When I think Dial, I think Sundial. And yes. and like maybe, maybe look, I know a lot of fans don't like to hear this, but it, it, more than likely there's going to be some sort of time travel element in this. I think that's why you're seeing a younger uh, Indiana Jones and what have you. Um, I think that's going to be sort of like a thing on, in this movie. I really do. Yes. And again, I'm not against that. I just you just have to handle that right. Right. Cause th yeah. there could be some sort of, uh, artifact that he finds and, 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 and time travels connected to that artifact and right. it's done in a beautiful way. It just all depends on the way you handle it. It could also be a total shit show. It just, again, it's all execution, but I do think that's an element of this. And that's why we're seeing younger indie. Mm -hmm. I think that that's going to be a thing. I think they're going to time travel. There's going to be, <sighs> Some we of that heard, involved. We've heard rumors, rumors, rumors about time travel being involved. Uh, yep. every, you know, very, very early on. Uh, look, listen, you know, nobody likes his name. He's very maligned, right? And he was featured as a as a as a, as a character <laughs> in <laughs> She-Hulk, right? Uh, Doomcock, gonna say it. He was the guy that was saying, mm, 
going to be time travel, going to be this, going to be that. And then we saw the Daily Mail uh, pick up that story and uh, actually had some photos to go along with uh, what Doom Puck was actually saying right there. And then we heard about reshoots and then we hear about all this kind of uh, crazy stuff there. Looks to be that those uh, that the uh, um, uh, rumors about time travel are true. I think that's where the Dial of Destiny actually comes in, which, by the way, Dial of Destiny, ooh, good alliteration. Not going to lie. Good alliteration. But yeah. it just sounds a little it sounds a little it sounds a little off. I, I, I'm not sure. I don't know what it is about it, but Kingdom yeah. of the Crystal Skull. Oh, that's great. Oh, that's, yeah, that sounds Temple like Indy. Yeah. Last Crusade, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Dial of Destiny. Oh, I don't know. Um, uh, that's, 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 that seems to be a little bit of a, a stretch to me, but again, this is, I come from at, from a place where I grew up like playing the old video games, yeah, <laughs> like on CD-ROM and floppy disk and stuff like that and doing all this kind of crazy stuff. So I kind of come out from a, like a little bit different perspective. Like my expectations are kind of high because I, I, I do love this character so much. So that's kind of like, you know, the, the tough thing for me, cause it's like, I got to put. I gotta, you know, set my expectations re- reasonably. Um, the uh, the face work, you know, the aging looks great, like we said before, yeah. looks awesome. But then there's like some shots, there's some CGI shots that don't look so great. And I'm hearing that this movie is, you know, well over two hundred million dollars. I'm I wonder why the like this some of the stuff doesn't look as polished as I, as I, as I think it, it probably could be. I mean, there is some, sh- there's some shots right here. Let me bring them up if I can. Um, about around the end, of the end of the trailer. Oh, it's going to give me that problem. Okay. Let's see here. Um, it does not let me go past that point. Well, anyway, there's some there's some shots at the end of the trailer uh, that have uh, Harrison Ford on a horse, right? Uh, Indiana Jones on a horse, and um, some people were quick to point out that you know when his horse bucks right there in the kind of middle of uh, what's like a, a city city intersection or city square, right, with traffic all around him and this kind of parade sequence uh, happening uh, all around him, that uh, his kind of face tech there doesn't look that great looks like his mm. his head was transplanted on there and also too when he's actually going through the uh, subway on that horse oh, those cgi shots do not look good i mean it gave me like fast and the furious four type vibes <laughs> anybody remembers that sequence when they're going the tunnels and stuff like that not good that is not something that you want to evoke and and i don't know i mean did you see that og i mean maybe I maybe no, i saw I did. I, I know it's a lot with the, with the horse, with the horse. Yeah. I think a lot of people were talking about that. Um, the horse, it, it was off. I hope, hopefully they can, they can go in there and sort of clean that up a little bit. Um, maybe it's not done yet. I don't know, but yeah, that did seem a little bit off. I mean, and, and they only showed it for like a second, but man, you, re- your eye really goes to it. You know, um, it really goes to it. Um, yeah. I, I actually, you know, I, I waited to see these things on the big screen. Maybe I shouldn't have, <laughs> uh, <laughs> because, you know, some things were just noticeable. The the, the yeah. um, color correction was like a little bit off. You know, you can tell some shots were comped, CG, all that kind of stuff. And it, it is kind of concerning because that kind of follows what happened in um, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull that people had problems with where they would, you know, you remember that scene with uh, uh, his son Mutt fencing, right? And like the jungle did not look good at all, right? Right. And it kind of evoked that for me. It was like, oh, man, are we making the same mistakes? Uh, again, hopefully not. You know, hopefully it's just, hey, trailers, not super polished, whatever. We're still working on the VFX. You know, n- no no harm, no foul. But yeah. um, I've been hearing that this that this film has been plagued with, with, with uh, a, a host of issues, and maybe that set back some of that VFX schedule. Well, and that really sh- kind of shows, too, how, how difficult – these movies are like even like a lot of people kind of like to just oh well this is disney you know they don't get it kathleen kennedy and i'm i believe me i am no fan of kathleen kennedy i've said many videos <laughs> she should have been fired like two days ago uh oh, believe man. me i think i think lucasfilm needs a new a new head they absolutely oh, yes. do uh her time is is it's it's come on it's come for sure but to be fair um even 
like K- Kingdom of the Crystal Skull was was a movie that was panned by fans. Pan fans hated that movie. I mean, it was really, really not well received at all. Um, and that was pre Disney. And it, so it's kind of it kind of shows you that like sometimes these things aren't so easy. Like when you're Absolutely. dealing with legacy characters, it's not so easy just to be like, well, instant hit. There is an element of like expectation there that even right. like George Lucas and people that were doing Crystal Skull couldn't really overcome. Yeah. So I think that that going into this one, I think fans need to have a little bit of understanding that this is not so easy to sort of accomplish. Like, first of all. Harrison Ford isn't the same guy that he was in, in, yeah. in the eighties. He, he is much older now. And, and that's going to be, it's going to him alone, just him alone being 80 years old. Now is going to bring a different energy to the role Correct. than before. It's going to be a different, almost a different character. No matter how well you write it, he's not going to be the same guy that he was at, at 35 years old, you know? Sure. So that's a different dynamic. So I think that, I think we have to all understand that a little bit going into this It's not going to be Indiana Jones from the temple of doom. Uh, right. This is not the same guy. Harrison is not that guy anymore. Mm-hmm. And, you know, now in terms of the bait and switch, I do see a lot of kind of talk about a bait and switch. I will say this in terms of bait and switch. I, I think it's not so much a bait and switch anymore. I think it's pretty much known at this point that that they've been wanting to pass the fedora on. Mm-hmm. I mean, they were hinting about that even in Crystal Skull that he was going to pass the fedora they on. Were, yeah. So there's no bait and switch. It's very clear they want to continue this franchise, but they oh, but yes. but Harrison's getting older, and so he can't do it forever. So th- maybe it's Feely Waller Bridge. I know a lot of people don't like that. I don't even know necessarily if I don't think I don't even know if I'm happy with that. I got to see her performance in this, mm-hmm. mm, you know. But eventually, if if you want Indiana Jones as a franchise to continue, you're probably going to have to pass it on. Now here's sure. the other thing. Yeah. But here's the other thing too. Technology is sort of changing that a little bit, though, right? Right. With this, uh, what's the gentleman's name that does the that does the, uh, oh. the smooth smoothy? I forgot his name. I feel so bad. <laughs> uh, yeah. Something like that. Yeah, yeah I think it's like smoothy or smooth. Oh man, I, I, I had it too. His name. I'll, I'll look it up. I'll look it up. Go yeah. ahead. Go ahead. No problem. But yeah, they Lucasfilm hired this guy, and he's doing an incredible work with the de aging and the deep fake stuff, which is what we're seeing here with the young indie. What, what we saw with with younger Luke and Grogu in the book of Boba, there might be a day where this technology gets good enough where you can have a Harrison Ford playing Indiana Jones, even a young Indiana Jones, 20, 30, 40 years from now, you might Sham- not necessarily. <coughs> Shamook. 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 Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so we'll see. Yeah, no. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You, you, there might be a time when you just, you know, you, you got to have somebody in there. Right. Um, and, and it's not Harrison Ford. And and that, you know, we were talking about it before the show. And I got to be honest, you know, I'm, I'm kind of intrigued, like of like, uh, I don't know, like a Disney Plus series that has this deep fake technology kind of done throughout it uh, with a kind of a stand in. Right. And Harrison yeah, Ford yeah. just signs right. Just, you know, signs his kind of likeness rights away. They give him a big check and even past him, they gave his family a check and we just kind of right. keep this thing kind of going right there. I'm kind of intrigued by that idea because man, look, that even in this trailer, I mean, it just looks like, whoa, like yeah. we step back in time. I mean, it looks breathtaking. It looks so good. And we know that they can do stuff like stuff like that with the uh, Mandalorian um season two obviously uh book of Boba Fett and so forth so um you know re- really kind of exciting tech right there you know hopefully if if you have an actor who was like hey i am fine with you you know them using my likeness from then on because i think a lot of people kind of were turned off by you know, like you know tarkin and it was like well right. did you get permission you know that kind of thing and and it's like well, well yes but you know what he would have wanted that right so it kind of got in this gray area but the stuff looks so good yeah you know what do we necessarily need the passive door on now right the right. realistic expectation is because disney has paid a lot for these rights specifically from paramount and so and so forth right they want to continue this franchise and yeah. you know realistically it's probably going to be without Harrison Ford. And yeah. what does that look like? And so I don't know if it is Phoebe Waller Bridge, L337 from Solo. Uh, I did not uh, like that character at all. No. That was honestly, that was one of the worst things about Solo for me yeah. was that character. And I'm not like nothing against Phoebe. Like, 
maybe she's a great person, but I just didn't like the character. I really didn't. I, I yeah. thought it was cringy, cringy as hell. It it was it was very much <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> same energy same energy yeah, same same energy right same energy so uh, overall like I'm I'm, I'm optimistic uh, yeah but to your point that you uh, made before you know about uh, hey they could you know the the previous. Um, duo right of steven spielberg george lucas they couldn't crack the code right right this you know this is I, i've heard had some problems right you know i was i was telling you i don't want to be a pessimist but i was telling you before this it was like man maybe you know it doesn't matter who has the rights to this who's creating this who's writing this who's whatever maybe a Un unbelievably amazing Indiana Jones film in 2023 is just not possible, you know, just given the circumstances of the situation. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I, I know this is, and this is kind of the one thing I wanted to kind of, you know, include here. Um, there, there has been some talk of some test screenings going on, right? And what does that actually mean? Um, from what I understand, there were internal screenings, right? right. Uh, internal to the studio. Uh, not necessarily test screenings. And the internal right. screenings have uh, suggested that um, I, I guess there was some kind of altercation. This is going off of what Kamran Pasha has included on his Patreon account from reliable sources in, in his best estimation, right? Again, take this with a grain of salt, but what he's saying was that when Chapek, back when Chapek was the CEO, <laughs> um, actually saw the footage he was very upset and kind of laid into Kathleen Kennedy just a bit. Um, that may have been uh, because of that. Uh, Kathleen Kennedy might have resulted in one of the executives that may have fought for his ouster, right? You know, uh, get him before he gets me kind of thing. I don't know. I, I can't confirm that obviously. Um, but I'm also hearing like rumors that there were, as many as seven different endings actually filmed here. I have no idea if that is true. That is, that seems like a God awful amount, but uh, we know there was uh, uh, plenty of reshoots here. We know that production has stepped back, you know, it's a Kathleen Kennedy production. So you're going to have problems. All right. Yeah, <laughs> um, exactly. <laughs> right. Exactly. So we have heard of that kind of stuff. You know, hopefully the budget hasn't exploded too much from it. And hopefully we're in good shape, but um, I don't know, you know, this, this is, um, it's got a lot riding on this film and, yeah. and you know, it, I'm, 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 I'm cautiously optimistic like you, but, but, yeah. but very cautious. Well, and, and the thing too, with the JPEG screenings, uh, man, I'm really mixed on that yeah. because on the one hand, I'm like, Oh man, that that's not good. You know, yeah. obviously it's not good. Um, on the other hand, I'm like, well, look, I defended JPEG a lot, but he's not exactly like, he doesn't exactly have an eye for creativity. Let's just say that. Right. He's kind of a numbers guy. So, uh, okay. So he didn't like it, but, uh, what does that mean exactly? So I, I'm really torn on that, you know, sure. I don't know. I don't know what to make of it. I really don't. And Chapek might be absolutely right. I, if I, maybe if I, if I saw the same screen that he did, I might be, Oh shit. Yeah. What is she doing? <laughs> Kathleen Kennedy? Come on. Yeah. But I just don't know. Cause Chapek isn't, it's not like it, it's not like a Kevin Feige. Let's just say that. Like if Kevin Feige watched it or or John Favreau watched it, it's like, oh god, this is a shit show. I'd be like, oh shit, I'm worried. You know, mm. JPEG isn't exactly known for his creative chops. So true, well, true. We'll see. But he knows what sells. <laughs> he knows what sells. That's true. You know, um, we'll see. We'll see. But uh, but I, I'm hearing a lot from this film. Otherwise, visuals look. Uh, I mean, the you know the setting and everything like that. The yeah, tone, cool. you know, pretty pretty good it, it's it's definitely has piqued my curiosity but i don't know if it's de if it has me in there weekend of right okay. now it's kind of like mm, i'll wait and see because yeah I don't, I don't want my favorite character to it's, be ruined no but, it's 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 a tough one it's a tough one it's it a, it's a, we, had a, we had a really lackluster crystal skull people have been burned by disney star wars and lucasfilm <laughs> recently in the past decade there yeah. there is a lot of uh doubt here and understandably so, and, you know, right. understandably so. People have a right to be doubtful. I hope they kick ass, though. But uh, we have another trailer we want to talk about, though. We What's up next? Do. I, we do. I think that I think the the thing that I want to get into uh, a little bit here because it's, it's coming out soon, and they released some stuff. Um, I believe this past uh, Monday Night Football or the previous one or whatever. Uh, Avatar: The Way of Water. Um, yeah. This trailer, I gotta gotta be honest. It, it, I was like, wow, this actually looks. 
pretty good. <laughs> like it, it, it looks it, incredible, first of all. But it actually, right. like piqued my interest a little bit. Go ahead, OG. No, you're right. You're right. And actually, um, the interesting thing about this trailer is I'm not really okay. Look, I'll be real with you. I'm going into this with a bias, right? For and against. And what I mean by that is, is like. I love Indiana Jones. Okay. I love Indiana Jones. So the trailer for Indy is going to interest me more than the trailer for Avatar. Cause I'm not an Avatar guy. I'm just not. Exactly. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Drunk three PO brother. I love you, man, but I'm not an Avatar guy. It's not my thing, you know, but here's the thing though. I will, I gotta be fair, you know, uh, in terms of how trailers go, I don't know. I think the Avatar trailer was a better trailer as as trailers go i think the avatar trailer kind of hit all the right notes and there was less of like um question marks with it like right right like i'm watching this i'm going wow like this is this is classic hollywood blockbuster this is like 80s and 90s hollywood blockbuster like summer blockbuster and like you really felt that energy and it was really an event film and you got that from the trailer you I did. got that, I, and I, and, and as much as I'm, a, I'm a huge Indiana Jones fan, massive, way more than Avatar, huge. But I think the Avatar trailer succeeded more in that that event feeling, you know. Yeah, I, I look. People are gonna probably look at this and go, "Like, what? What are you talking about, OG and yeah. Dre? What the? What? What? What, 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 what are you fuck? doing?" Yeah, I know. It's like, what? 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 What are you guys going on about? Look, I, look, listen. If I would have told you that, uh the avatar two trailer would have piqued my interest more than the indie five trailer. I would have, you know, uh, 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 even like two weeks ago, I would have told you you were crazy. Right. But here we are, you know, here uh, we're in this kind of situation. I gotta be honest. It looks pretty good now. It does. Yeah. I am hearing, <laughs> um, uh, the, uh, uh, what is it? The, uh, uh, prices for, um, uh, a, sh a 3d showing in a, premium large format screen were released recently because obviously the tickets went on sale. Right. And in LA, I believe, uh, you know, for premier, um, you know, uh, evening viewing of this thing, uh, a premium large format screen, 3d cost you like $26 a person. That's a lot. <laughs> like that's a lot. Yes. Right. And then there's one more thing that happened in LA recently, and I think you know what I'm gonna, where I'm going to go here. OG, mask mandate is back in uh, LA County, in one of the biggest markets for this thing. And I'm just going, who was going to want to put on a mask for three hours to see this yeah. thing? Oh man! Oh gosh! Why are they doing the, the mask mandate thing? Come on! Eventually, uh, I don't want to get too political here, but eventually, yeah. we, we got we got eventually we we got to move on. You know, as a society here, we mm -hmm. can't constantly. Oh man, it drives me nuts. But it's you make tough. a great point about that. They make a great point about that. Um, yeah, the, the, and, and, and the price here's the thing too: the price of these tickets, right? With for the mm -hmm. 3D and all that. And I've been saying that for a while too, like with the theaters it's a real uphill battle for the theater industry in general, because you have all these options now with content. You know, I can, I can watch a house of dragon on HBO on my iPad now. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and you know, I'm not paying an arm and a leg now, granted mm -hmm. you're not getting the huge screen and the, and the booming sound system and all that, but I'm still watching the content. There's more options out there. So when you start, uh -huh. look, it's not 2009 anymore. The first avatar movie came out a long time ago, many, many moons ago. Man, so when you're going yeah. into this and you're seeing that it's 20 something bucks a person to get into this thing, when you could, when you honestly, when you have access to all kinds of content on your phone, your iPad, your computer, yeah. it's a, it's a tough sell for these theaters to make that now more than ever. And yeah. that's the well, thing, that's the problem, you know, for the industry it, in general. It is, it is. And people ask like, oh, Hollywood doesn't have a, doesn't have a new idea. It's like, it's not really about having a new idea. It's about, well, okay, you have all this kind of, um, you have all these media outlets, right? You have, you have content on Netflix, Hulu, on your phone, YouTube, right? Watching us. Um, you have all these different studios producing their own movies. How does a studio stand out from the pack? Right. Easiest way, take something in your library, Re rehab it, refurbish it, put it out there. You have a built-in audience right there, right? And you have built-in excitement and all that kind of stuff. That's why Hollywood keeps doing this. It's kind of like with parks, right? Why yeah. do they go IP? 
built an audience, <laughs> oh. right? You know, it's a it's a safe investment kind of thing, and that's kind of you know what we have here with uh, with these franchises and so forth. It's a different world. Avatar needs to stand out amongst that. Uh, you know, I hope it. I mean, this is really expensive. <laughs> it's like four hundred yeah. million dollars. Oh. There, there are so. <laughs> Even beyond the cost of this yeah. individual movie, there yeah. is so much riding on this movie. Not only like for this movie, but this movie's performance yes. will make or break or justify or not justify right. the Fox acquisition. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, might. There's a lot there with this, you know. Mm -hmm. So if this movie goes and it dog it die, as you say, Dre, it dies a dog's death at the box office. See that that definitely like, and we've been saying a lot on this channel that Bob Iger and I stand by it. People say, "Oh, you just now now you love Bob Iger." I don't love Bob Iger. I'm going to mm -hmm. support Bob Iger right now because he's running the company I love. Right. But I'm still going to acknowledge the dude made mistakes. That doesn't change because he's CEO right now. He overspent on Fox, and as a millennial, say full stop. Okay, full stop. Full stop. He he overspent on Fox, mm -hmm. regardless of whether he's back or not. And I stand mm -hmm. by that. And if you go in here now with Avatar, and this movie dies a dog's death at the box office, okay, well, now you're tipping away. Now it's even worse for the Fox acquisition. Yeah. Now there's even less of a case to be made for that. Yeah. That's not good. There's a lot riding on this. And James Cameron, I'm telling you, man, this guy, I, I got it. Look, dude, I got to I gotta respect the guy's confidence, right? Yeah. He was asked. He was asked, like, it's a three-hour movie. Like, what if you got to go bathroom in between? Oh, I love this. I love this. Right? And Cameron says, no worries. When you go see Avatar, go to the bathroom. You'll you'll get the scene that you miss when you watch it a second time. Oh, my, oh my God. This guy is confident. Cameron <laughs> oh, is, like, all in on this. Like, he's confident. This thing is going to, like, do what the first one did. I don't know about that, James, but I respect your confidence. He put his – he put – look, dude. He put, he put his, it out there. Yeah, he did. Big time. Yeah, no, yeah, no. There's a lot. There's a lot riding on this, including probably his career. You know, because I mean, this is yeah. You know, this is either a way of water uh, original Avatar situation, or it's a water world situation. Oh God, where it's, please, no. yeah, or it's a it's a huge flop. So. You know, hopefully it's not that way. Hopefully this all works out. I mean, especially mm -hmm. for the studio. They've invested so much into it, but yeah. we will see real fast while we still have you. Um, yeah. Did you see the Gardens of Galaxy Volume 3 trailer that was released as part of this uh, uh, Comic-Con experience? I did. I did see Guardians 3. Cool. And um, so it's weird. Like, I'm not, and I've said this many times on the channel, I'm not a fan of, like, the Guardians or Ragnarok kind of humor. It's yes. not my thing. Even with Endgame, every time the Guardians came on, like Star Lord and Dragon, oh God, here we go. Now we got the cheesy humor, right? Not my thing. Okay, but okay. here's here's the thing: the trailer itself was pretty good, actually. It wasn't mm -hmm. bad. Um, and the thing about Guardians is that while I don't really love the movies, I know it's unpopular, mm -hmm. but I'm just not a huge fan of the movies. I love mm -hmm. the characters. I love yes. Groot. I love Rocket. Right. Love Rocket. I love these characters. So. I think the trailer was really, really good. And I think for the people that were into the first two movies, I think this is going to be a home run. I think that this is going to be something that I think people are really, really, really going to dig. It's just not for me necessarily. But I think that overall, it's it. if you're a fan of this already and you like this kind of humor and you're, you're into the James Gunn kind of thing, oh, yeah, this is it's a, it's a home run. I know it, it's going to be a home run here. Uh, show my screen. Just, there you go. That's what's going to make it a home run. Baby Rocket. Oh, my God. People are going to go insane. No. Um, <laughs> no, I I, um, I, I, I like the trailer. I did. Um, um, what is it? Uh, James Gunn has been kind of setting up this notion that this is going to be like the last time these group of Guardians are featured in the MCU um, in kind of this kind of standalone fashion here. We'll see what that actually means. Obviously, James Gunn's not around anymore in the Disney studio right now. Right. Uh, he's doing stuff for DC. So we'll see what happens to his kind of beloved um, characters, not just for himself, but but um, these these characters have had an impact on the entire uh, MCU fan base. You know, they really have been embraced. So uh, I'm curious to see what, how, you know, um, these stories that they do conclude um but uh but hey look you know you give me rocket you give me Groot I'm all in man I'm yeah. all in I, I love rocket so much and um yeah pretty pr pretty good 
pretty good. Yeah. No, absolutely. It was it was a it was a, a very it was kind of like how I kind of felt about the Avatar trailer. Like I can oh. sort of separate myself from like, okay, I'm not a super fan of Avatar, but I gotta say this trailer was effective. And I kind of feel the same way about the Guardians uh trailer. We're like, okay, I'm not a huge fan of these movies, but man, it's effective though, right? And yeah. I'm I'm with you. I love Rocket. I think he's hilarious. I love Groot. I love Groot. Um so I don't know. I, I, I think this movie will do very, very well. I think the characters, I mean, assuming like they all don't die in this movie, I don't think every one of them will. I will yeah. probably lose a couple of them along the way, unfortunately. I think so, yeah. Yeah, sad, unfortunately. But I think at least some of these will characters will live on. I think we will see them in in, in future MCU projects, maybe, I think so. you know, whether that be movies or like Disney Plus shows or what have you. Yeah. But um, yeah, this movie is going to be, look, and this comes out, you know, in 2023, 2023 has the potential to be a banger year for Disney um, on the film side. Mm -hmm. We'll see how it all pans out. We'll see what happens. You know, this indie, they are potential mega blockbusters, but will yeah. they land? We don't know yet. We'll see. Uh, We've been shocked before. We don't know. Uh, yeah, we we have been uh, shocked <laughs> before. Um like, yeah, like, we, like two Sundays ago, basically, right? Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. yeah, exactly. Right. Oh, Jesus. Uh, we've been shocked before. Look, I, I, I think the 2023, or at least the early 2023, uh, slate, this kind of front half of it that they've released trailers for, I think it's, I think it, it should be pretty strong, especially amongst some of the other, uh, releases that they have in the can. So, um, the, yeah. and, and honestly, we saw great trailers from a lot of different uh, places, not just from Disney, but, uh, yeah. from, I mean, the Super Nintendo, uh, or Super Mario Brothers trailer, oh. right? That was, yeah, really, really good, really, really strong. Um, you know, uh, some people like the Transformers trailer. John Wick. Hey, man, I, I'm a I'm a John Wick fan. If anybody yeah. knows me, I love me some John Wick. That looks awesome. Should be a banger year for the box office in general. I think you know it should really be because we we've we've kind of had this lull, not in terms of people going to the box office, just right. things that bring people to the box office. Right. right? right. That's kind of what the lull is. Now that it's coming out, I think it's going to be a banger year. I'm really excited. Yeah, yeah. Now I have to take off, but mm -hmm. Mr. Vash Sky is gonna pilot the plane while I'm gone. Mr. Vash Sky, thank you so much, brother. It was an honor uh, talking some uh, trailers with you and, and talking shop. Mm -hmm. Continue the conversation. I will yeah. see everybody later. Absolutely. Thank you so much, uh, OG. Don't worry, guys. I won't take too much of your time here. Uh, I just w kind of wanted to kind of go over my extended thoughts about some of this stuff, uh, you know, because you know, OG's got a, got a heart out there. I didn't want to take up uh, too much of, you know, his time, me yakking. But, um, you know, going back to the uh, Indiana Jones trailer, look, listen, like I was saying with him, I'm a little, I don't know, I, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm kind of half in, half out there. There's a lot riding on that, obviously. And as he was, as OG was saying before, um, you know, there's uh, with when you when you deal with legacy characters, you know, there's there's those expectations that people have, and um, you know, uh, you know, obviously, uh, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull wasn't that well received. Are they going to be able to kind of bang it out here um, in 2023? I'm not sure. We know this movie's been delayed multiple times, um, and uh, you know, Harrison's health has kind of declined there. His age is definitely starting to show, uh, which is uh, you know unfortunate in its own right. Um, but but hopefully it is a nice send off for not just Indiana Jones uh, and uh, you know Harrison Ford playing the character because he has said that this is going to be kind of his last hurrah here. But also for John Williams, I'm really kind of I'm really hoping that that film um, that you know maybe we can put some of the you know, political and social narratives just aside just a little bit, just so that, you know, fans can have their kind of one last two raw for the character that they love. We will see. I'm not, uh, um, I'm not super confident in that, but, but hopefully that is the case. And hopefully James Mangold, uh, can, can at least wrestle with some of those, um, uh, you know, uh, um, let's say, uh, uh com you know, conflicting, uh, um, agendas there, but w w we'll see. Um, Avatar The Way of Water, like I was telling OG, I am actually, <laughs> I, look, I, I, you know, if anybody's been watching the channel for, for, um, for any length of time, you'll know that I am not the biggest Avatar fan, let's say, right? And I haven't had the most optimistic outlook in terms 
in terms of this, in terms of this, I do apologize there. In terms of this um, uh, way of water um, exhibition here, I just it's just not super optimistic here. Not super um, high on it. Uh, but I will say that trailer really did blow me away. Actually, when we were leading up to this uh, show, I actually took OG aside and said, hey, you know what? You got to watch this. And uh, he he had not seen it before, before, before air. And so um, he kind of had the same uh, reaction to it that I did. Just like, wow, that was surprisingly good. And I, I, I do think they'll be able to get some people in the theaters through that. And hopefully that that word of mouth, because really that's what it kind of really needs. It, it is tracking um, in the area that it'll take some legs to get its money back at least. That's what it's really going to need. It's going to really need word of mouth. It's really going to need uh, people kind of uh, evangelizing about it to their friends and family saying, hey, you got to go in the theater and see this. That's what it's going to need. And I think it has um, the ingredients to make that recipe happen. So we'll just have to see. That's a story to definitely watch. If you guys thought Strange World was bad, that it tanked. If Avatar tanks, that's going to be a, 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 a story that is thermonuclear. Okay? I mean, <laughs> people are really going to be talking about that one. So we will definitely uh, keep an eye on that um, for you guys here on Orange Nerd for sure. Uh, Gardens of Galaxy Volume 3. Yeah, I, I I thought it was I thought it was pretty good. Like I was saying before with OG, they were definitely making this kind of um, you know they're setting up this this kind of take that that this might be the la the, the the last that we see of the Guardians or this version of them. This might be the, this kind of combined last hurrah here. Um, it's sad to see because I think the Guardians. Um, they're 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 I think there's a really great dynamic there between the characters. I know OG's not a super big fan of the actual films. Um, I am, especially the the, the first one. Uh, it just it it was a summer blockbuster, just like the way you kind of remember it from like the uh, like uh, OG was saying from like the 80s and 90s, right? It just made you kind of feel good, made you kind of um, uh, you know just get a big bag of popcorn and just 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 uh, enjoy what you were watching in front of you um really phenomenal stuff and and i'm hoping that this one will evoke that it looks like it it, it will but it, it looks like a more emotional story as well uh which is going to be uh, quite interesting because it's also something that the guardians of the galaxy films really do well is that kind of emotion between the characters and those kind of um Let's say those uh, those deep connections that uh, you know some of those uh, uh, some of these characters have between them. I, I think that's uh, that's a really kind of strong thing, and and uh, um, James Gunn does you know everything he can to kind of uh, coax it out of there. So uh, sounds sounds uh, pretty entertaining, and I don't know maybe maybe I get a ticket the first weekend. We'll see. Uh, the Super Mario uh, trailer. Um, yeah, we. I had some thoughts about this on our buddy's um, channel, Theme Park Wizard. Friend of the channel, friend of the show, for sure. Um, we've had him on before, obviously. You've seen him in the chat, probably, if you've joined any of our live shows. But uh, occasionally, the OG boys, well, we make it over there as well. And um, I got, you know, uh, we just had a... Uh, a, a great fun time, a blast. Definitely check out that most recent live stream that he had over uh, on his channel right after this one. But we were kind of going over the Super Mario Brother trailer on there. And uh, I got to be honest, Illumination, uh, Universal Comcast, they really have something. They they have a hit over there, I think. Uh, immediately when the first trailer was released, it, was, it sprang up to number one in terms of most anticipated movie. Um, it, it really hit all the right notes with, uh, with both fans and people that might not be as familiar with the franchise. I know myself, I, I haven't played the game since the original NES. So, um, you know, that, that was, uh, kind of a cool thing, uh, to, to, even for me, even for someone who's not a huge Nintendo fan to kind of get enraptured into this thing. Uh, I, I think it just looks, I think it just looks absolutely phenomenal. I mean, I was really, really impressed with the animation, the quality, the styling, everything. I mean, it really, um, I think 
you know, illumination with their association with Nintendo really hit on something uh, that is that is actually truly special. Um, you know, uh, OG made the comment that uh, he hadn't been really all that enthusiastic about seeing an animated film in theaters for quite some time. I have to concur with him. I mean, it's it's been a while, you know, uh, and that includes some of the Disney stuff. I know we're big fans, but, you know, just some of the stuff just hasn't looked uh, that great, to be honest. And you see something like this, and it's like, wow, you know, that's why I love animation. That's why I love, you know, uh, stories in this genre. And it just kind of hits all those notes while at the same time evoking a kind of nostalgia that we have for the video game franchise itself. Paired up together, I think it's really phenomenal. Um, really, really high hopes for that. Uh, and it does have an implication for the Walt Disney Company, not just for its studio division, but also for its theme park division as well. Um, because if that movie really does take off, I think we're going to see um, fervor for uh, the, the uh, Super Nintendo World themed lands, both in Hollywood and in Florida really take off so that's definitely a story to watch more on that on wizards channel um the other trailers that i wanted to co go ahead and quickly run over uh transformers looks like a transformers film we'll see uh the one i really wanted to get to was john wick um john wick chapter four looks absolutely awesome like i was saying before in the uh, uh um um kind of the middle part of the show right before Oh, gee, uh, left was that uh, I'm a huge John Wick fan. Huge, huge, huge fan. Love the first one. And I've gone to every single subsequent John, John Wick film in the theater uh, since. It's just something that I do whenever these come out. It's like, okay, I don't even know. I need to know the plot. I don't even, know, I don't even need to see the trailer. I know I'm going to like it. Um, but I watch them anyway. You know, you know how we do. And uh, this one, no surprise, this one looks uh, fantastic, awesome. It's got all the right beats, all the right notes. We go, we go to fantastical locations. The cinematography is just absolutely gorgeous. Um, <laughs> obviously, Keanu Reeves is uh, uh, fantastic as John Wick, John Wick uh, delivering those, uh, those great uh, one-liners that we all kind of know and love. Um, some of the cast around him really looks uh, in top form. And uh, it's going to be awesome to see him in kind of these exotic locations, like in the middle of the desert or Paris and so forth. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, so, yeah, um, between all these films, I think 2023, we didn't even mention uh, Quantumania, Ant-Man. I think that looks uh, actually pretty pretty interesting. I think the, the 2023 slate from all the cinema actually looks really, really strong. It's going to be fascinating to see, um, you know, how these films actually perform. But I, I, I do believe that there is a string of, of really great looking films that will get people back into the theaters. And this kind of, you know, post pandy lull that we've seen from box office performance. I got to be honest, I think that's uh, that's done away with here. I, I really do think. Uh, the, the box office is really going to recover in a big, big way. Um, we just haven't had that many great films, to be honest, um, it, it, you know, in, in the last couple of months. And, and I think that will continue uh, until about March. So, you know, these things are slow going. Um, you know, productions were also were also stopped during uh, the events of 2020. And so that's kind of con has contributed to this kind of... Um, let's say bottleneck that we're seeing from these films. Uh, some people, you know, threw their films out there, saw what stuck, saw what didn't do it on streaming, all that. It just sent it up into a tizzy. I think we'll start seeing everything kind of normalize, uh, even more in 2023, especially as, you know, some things affect the economy. As we know, even in down economic times, People go to the movies and people um, save a little bit of discretionary income in order to be, uh, as, you know, in order to be immersed and escape from their daily lives. So I think we'll see that um, play out as well. Anyway, if you like what you saw, um, hey, hit subscribe. You know, uh, um, I, we want to go ahead and yeah, thank you, OG. We want to go ahead and thank you. Uh, thank you all for for watching. 
please hit that subscribe button right there if you liked it because we have a lot of uh, great videos to come. Stuff is always happening at the Walt Disney Company, but right now, oh my gosh, it seems like everything is happening at the Walt Disney Company, and we're going to be here to cover all of it. So hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Tell us what you thought of these trailers. Honestly, I want to know. Uh, what did you think of Indiana Jones uh, 5? What did you think of uh, Avatar 2? What did you think of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3? What did you think of Super Mario? What did you think of uh, any of the trailers that you saw, even that we didn't mention? Please give us, uh, give us a comment. And tell us uh, what you thought of all of this, because we would love to know. And uh, yeah, if you want to go ahead and follow me, you can go ahead and do so at Vashkai right down there. Just go ahead and type that in and um, should pop up for all the, as Christine Wastelands McCarthy would say, for all the robust discussion right there. Uh, uh, you can go ahead and uh, do so there if you want to go ahead and see me well it's going to be on the channel you're watching right now at orange grove 55 uh where you can see shows like orange nerd the one you're watching right now uh disney family man 23 with our buddy george right there with his citrus corner um and my show there as well freshly squeezed your source for juicy news and info squeezed fresh right from the grove and i think that's it uh thank you for watching guys and um Take care.